All right, so in the previous lecture, we had been able to see that we were discussing the problem of like two objects moving around each other, separated by distance r and having position vectors r1 and r2. So by means of the center of mass, we have been able to reduce this problem in terms of just as one object of mass mu, which is defined through the equation 1 over mu is equal to 1 over m1 plus m2, which is essentially the reduced mass. And we had essentially another mass, which is just the sum of the these two, that's the total mass. Okay, so in terms of this, what we had seen that the kinetic energy had been written as the kinetic energy of the center of mass plus the kinetic energy of the object with the reduced mass. Okay, so and also we know that we are studying the central force problem. So here the potential is just potential energy is just going to be a function of the distance, the separation between these two objects. So therefore it's going to be a function of the R. And since this is a constant object, therefore we have written and also we know that if we shift the Lagrangian by a constant number or you augment it with any other number, it's not going to change the equation of motion or issues with the dynamics of the system. And therefore, the kinetic energy, I will just write it as how the only term that is going to affect the dynamics. Okay. And now, as we have seen, as the motion is around a fixed axis, a fixed axis, say j is equal to constant. Okay, so therefore, your r dot vector, which is going to be r dot. Alright, so it will have a radial velocity, it will have a transverse velocity around the transverse direction, and the degenerate component that's going to be zero. Okay, so if you plug it these values into the above equation, we will be getting half mu r square r square theta dot square minus v of r. Okay, so those who didn't understand should note that. When r dot the dot in the additions we 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 will essentially take the dot product of r dot vector by with itself and where the only those components where we will be uh, dotting it with the same unit vector would be would survive the rest would be zero. Okay, so we have this. So from here, what we could infer, we will have del and by del r dot which is going to be P R and let's see how much would it be? That's going to be mu R dot. Similarly, we can have the P theta that's going to be del L by del theta dot that's mu R square theta dot. And now, next, next is to construct the Hamiltonian. Okay. So the Hamiltonian is going to be sum of all the degrees of freedom Ei Qi dot minus the Lagrangian. In our case, this is going to be just Pr R dot P theta theta dot minus the Lagrangian. So Pr, let's see what is the Pr. Pr is mu R dot. So therefore, we will get mu R dot square. Similarly, this is going to be mu R square theta dot and you have another theta, so this is going to be L. In fact, we could put the values of L right here itself. This is mu r dot square, mu r dot square, theta dot square, minus v r. So if we just simplify these things, what we will realize that the Hamiltonian will turn out to be the just the sum of kinetic and potential energy. And because the t is explicit, so this is going to be a constant thing, say that constant is, say, 
E. Okay, so this is my equation number so to keep writing the equations. So this is equation number one. The equation number two is here. Or we can just write one. This is two. Okay. Also, if we recall this equation here, because theta is cyclic, so this is also going to be constant. Okay. We could write this as two, or rather than this is going to be the three. So why did this happen? Because theta is, let me just write as theta is cyclic. Similarly, as t is replaced. Okay. So now we have the energy and the lambda momentum. So now we will start by refining some laws. So what is the okay? In fact, before you do that, let's try to check what is happening. So let's try to check the linear velocity. So that's going to be a general thing. So what is the linear velocity as we have you know, This should be dt by dt, which should be dA by dt in infinite small things. Now let's check the area, the infinitesimal area. So what we are doing? That means that in infinite table, suppose this is the original vector r. Now imagine in the infinite decimal time, delta t this moves by an angle delta l theta. So that will be the displacement, obviously, this will be a vector r plus delta r, and therefore this is could be approximated at r delta theta. So therefore, what will be the area? That's going to be, let me write it over, will be delta t tends to 0, half. This is 90 degree thing, so therefore half r times r delta theta by delta t, which is going to be half r square d theta by dt, which is half r square theta dot. And now if you put this value from here, so this is just l by t, and that angle is a constant. Why? Because it is a constant and so is the mu. So this means the aerial velocity is constant during the central force motion. And that is exactly the second. Alright, so now we will get back again. Um, so let me keep some equation number over here. 4. Okay. So, in fact, from here itself we could do something. But we, before that, we will do something else. So let's get back again to the Hamiltonian itself which gives us the constant energy and proceed it a little bit further and try to reduce the Hamiltonian in terms of only r vector r and r dot because as we have seen along theta direction we are not going to find anything interesting ok so what we had e that is half mu r dot square plus what we had half mu r square. Let's now put the value of theta r which is L by mu r square whole square and then we have the area. So this is going to be half mu r dot square plus we will get L square by 2 mu r square plus area or we will replace this by something else which we will refer as the P effective alpha. As you know that this is also a function of R, this was also a function of F, or we could write this as a B effective of R. Okay, so this is going to be my equation number 5 with B effective R is defined as the B of 
heart plus m square by 2 into r square. Okay, so now we will try to see the form of this for the case that we are going to consider. Okay, so suppose we have vr is equal to minus pr, that's the inverse square, of course. Okay. For those who are not familiar, what check minus tell you by dr, that's going to be a by r square. Okay, so let's plot this. So by plotting this, what we will realize, so this is my v effective, v r essentially. So this is my origin, this is r vector. So if we plot, so suppose this is n square by 2 mu r, this is going to look like this. Similarly, this will have a smoother form. So this is n square by 2 mu r square, this is minus p by r, so if we sum up these two, we will get something like this. So now let's check the features of this. Obviously, we will have three different zones of it. Number one, this is zone one, which is much, much larger and we need to plot it. Obviously, so then there is this second situation, so this is first case. The second case is that E1 is greater than zero, E is greater than zero, okay? This is second case, then we could have the third case, E3, which is less than zero. Okay, so as you could see, this is the intersection point for this one over here. So this is the R1 distance. Similarly, here too, this is intersecting on the two points, the R1 and R2. Okay, so now depending upon this type of things, we will have three different possibilities. Let's check what these three possibilities are. So case one. E1, E is greater than say energy one which is greater than much larger than E is equal to. So what we will have? The objects will keep moving in a straight line as if there is no force. The second case where E is greater than zero, what we will have? We notice that it will have the equation of motion will have efficiency one root. So it will have a vector r, so that will be the closest approach, we will be able to look at the point and then the object will essentially be directed around this and it will keep moving like this, okay. So this is my r, this is r1, okay. So now what is happening? This is what is happening after a certain point, it changes the distance, okay. So essentially this is going to be hyperbolic. And now let's check the case 3, where E is less than the effective. You got two roots. Okay. So these two roots will be equal. Let's form this circle. One has radius R1 and the radius R2. Now, what will happen? Suppose the object has started moving like this, it will move like this, and then it will keep here, moving here, and here, and here, and it will keep moving further and further. Okay? So, as you could see, that the object is bound to move between the R1 and R2. So, that's kind of potential will be formed. So, this is the only case that for which the orbits are orbits and this is Lauria position and this is no force of Okay, so these are the three different cases that we will have now. Okay, so from here onwards, so this is the story. Next, the, we will try to solve and find the equation for orbit in the next lecture and then we will explicitly see the characteristic of this orbit okay and we will hopefully also be able to uh, ensure that the k plus third lies also followed okay thanks a lot